specifically um, when it comes to the fight against terrorism in the Northeast and Boko Haram. In recent times, we've seen uh, mass uh, defections by the terrorist group. We've seen um, leaders killed. Um, and yet, on the Global Terrorism Index, Nigeria continues to be the third most dangerous place when it comes to terrorism, a number it has retained since 2017, seeming to imply that there hasn't been any improvement. Why do you think, despite what appear to be successes, um, we are still very much up there in the index that says we are the third most dangerous place um, when it comes to terrorism in the world? Well, it all depends on the parameters of assessment. I, I, what is important is that um, within the geographic space itself, that is our country, this, you know, our country borders, what are the manifestations? Do the critical stakeholders, those who have the interest of peace and security in our land, um, independent assessors, do they have that, do they share that opinion? Um, if you do a comparative analysis, and uh, that is within the time frame that you have indicated, would that be their assessment? Would that be their judgment? So what are the that, sort of things that, you that, would that, be looking at in comparing then and now? Uh, of course, um, just earlier on, you alluded to the fact that there are mass defections amongst um, the terrorists. Those defections didn't just come. They came because there were some focused actions and activities of And it's not because of the infighting between the groups, well, which is what the story is out no, there. If, of course, there are a multiplicity of factors, I must tell you. And, um, uh, and of course, the most prominent being the kinetic impact of our operations. Um, kinetic implying the use of force. We are countering force with force. Uh, these uh, elements have had to defect. And so it's this defection to superior you know, power that, uh, that, that has led to it. We are, we are not um, you know, uh, going to um, you know, rest on our hours because we've had such number, high numbers defecting. Uh, but I'm only bringing it out to show that a lot has happened. Quite a lot of mileage have traveled along that path. And so if um, uh, the Global Tourism Index um, assessors do not uh, or tend to discount those efforts, then of course, uh, I do not need to blame them. I only am um, more encouraged by the assessment of those that are within, who, of course, are part and parcel of uh, the space itself. Now, some have defected, but we've also seen some move into parts of the Northwest and parts of North Central, places like um, Niger State, for example, my own state, Zamfara State, increasingly seeing armed conflict by non-state actors that is as vicious as some of what we've seen with uh, Boko Haram, in some cases even more. Um, when you look at the conflict in the Northwest, North Central, and even parts of the Southeast, what are sort of the peculiarities of the issues that the military is dealing with when it comes to these different conflicts across Nigeria? When you have measures that have been taken to address those threats, the terrorists themselves and the criminal gangs themselves are not fools. Um, there certainly will have to be movement. Movement to areas where, of course, if you make an area untenable for them, of course, they look for other areas that they... So what does that do as, for, the, for your capacity and that not, of not your for me. people? And yeah. that's the reason why our engagement, our um, you know, actions, our activities also involve reviews of the threats. Um, and then, of course, review of the approaches to management of the threats. And then looking at other factors to which the aggregate of all these assessments lead to um, you know, operational um, changes, restrategizing, and having to in place measures to, um, um, to, to cover up gaps that may exist from the assessment that we've done. And so um, when you see that some of those elements are moving to other parts of the country, namely the Northwest and the parts of the North Central, it's from that uh, point of view. As of course, uh, because we have also factored uh, that, um, you know, you know, that um, reality 
uh, we have also taken measures to ensure that uh, we do not you know, allow these this regions of the country to you know, get to the stage that we experienced some time ago in the Northeast. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, this is a continuous exercise, a continuous process. And that's why we also believe that um, you know, everything that has to do with defense and security is not, um, is not, is not an end, it's a process. The end itself is peace, the state of peace. Um, one of the issues that came up when we saw an attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy was you went online and Nigerians were saying, well, if the military cannot defend themselves, how can they defend us? Can you answer that question? <laughs> uh, have we not been under attack? That when an attack happened at the Nigerian, at the Nigerian Defense Academy, does not imply that we are not under attack on a daily basis. Do you know how many of the attacks we have, that we have had to ward off? The troops on the front lines, the terrorist elements, who are they attacking? Even in the southeast, which you mentioned, who have they attacked? Police and then military. Now, the attack, uh, very specifically in, on Nigerian Defense Academy, and I, I think I, I've covered this in the past, is one of those attacks that is more of, you know, what, you, what I could liken to an, an arm attack, arm robbery attack of any unsuspecting individual. Now, now. So to you, it does not indicate a weakness no, in no, the no, army no. or Come in on, the military. No. But in any case, that's a, that's a, that's a training institution. Now that it's called, um, Nigerian Defense Academy or Military Academy does not mean that it's not the same as any other school. Any other school. Um, of course, it, um, we, 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 of course, I was embarrassed that uh, we did not, you know, first, I mean, uh, um, we didn't, we, we did not foresee uh, such um, a threat. I mean, the Nigerian Defense Academy is not a place where we could assume, I mean, we could think that uh, we should fortify to such a level that the liberty that is required to be able to emplace, you know, the level of um, leadership, learning, and, and skills, you know, we lost. But that, of course, is a lesson we've, uh, you know, factored. And, um, but that does not in any way, you know, dampen um, you know, the, the preparedness of uh, the armed forces um, of Nigeria to, to, to do what it should. Now, it does not in any way speak to um, our, our weakness and our inability to, to defend the nation. No, that's not at all. Um, what do you make of the violence in the Southeast, especially given the fact that we, are, we seem to be dealing with a secessionist group that is prepared to take up arms? Um, for what they say is self-realization. And the military is present in the Southeast and there have been allegations, all sorts of allegations from extrajudicial killings to people even saying that some of the things that are, being, um, that are happening are being staged by the military in order to make the indigenous people of Biafra look bad. That is the group that is agitating for secession. Um, what is the sort of military's approach to that particular region and dealing with the violence there because i imagine it can't be the same as what you do in borno and the same as what you do in the northwest well um the the, the situation in the southeast um it's not essentially what um it, you know the narrative um imply no that's not correct the situation in the southeast of course there's um, some level of violence. The military is present, just like any other part of the country. Even before the escalation of violence in the southeast, the military has always been there. 